Hello and welcome in. My name is Ryan. In this video, I'm going to be giving you five games that I consider to be staples in our hobby. Now by staple, I don't mean I think these are five games that every single person has to own and has to play, but I think these are games that could become your group or your family's game. So in this video, the five games I'm going to give you range from lighter games all the way up to solid medium complexity games. And just so you know, I'm not including any two player only or less games only games that work at larger player accounts because I am kind of thinking about this as a group that likes to meet together or a family that meets and plays the same games over and over again. With that being said, let's jump into our first game and that is The Crew. The Crew is an absolutely awesome little game that just contains a deck of cards and then a deck of smaller cards with a simple idea of taking tricks. Now lots of us have played trick taking games, maybe something like Rummy or Hearts before where the high card of the suit wins. It takes that concept and turns it into a cooperative game. So players around the table will have tasks assigned to them each turn, like you have to win the blue seven, you have to win the green eight. Then all the players are working together with limited communication to try to get those cards to their teammates. It's such an interesting game that really gets to grow with every group you teach it to. Even though I've taught this game and played it with a lot of different groups, Every time I kind of teach a new group of people, it takes a few rounds for the rules to kind of sink in, but then a few more rounds of playing to kind of go, okay, so, oh, so when you do this, you're trying to win this card, or this is kind of your play style. And the more your group plays together, the better you get. There are literally rounds of this. I start out in my first turn, I'm like, well, guys, throw down yellow seven. Everyone goes, oh, the yellow seven. Okay, the only reason you'd play yellow seven with the cards you're trying to win, and the strategy just kind of goes on and on that. There's so much you can figure out from what each other are playing. Our second game is going to leave completely behind any feeling of classic card games and jump into camel racing. Camel Up is a really fun and funny game where there is a camel race going on around the board, but you are not a camel. You're not a camel trying to get around the racetrack first. You are someone who is betting on the camels. So you might look down and see that red is in front and red has the best chance of winning this leg of the race. So you might place a bet on red. You're going to get five coins if red wins this leg. Or some other player might take in the five coin bet first, but you might say, you know what? I think there's a decent chance that green is going to roll high enough to surpass red. So I think those odds are good enough that I'm willing to take a bet on green winning. Then they add to all the chaos. When the camels end their movement on top of other camels, they stay there. Then when the camel below them moves, they carry them along with them. So the game is extremely chaotic. There's a little bit of strategy in how you want to place your bets and kind of play the odds, but this is more just the fun, classic, I would say family game. It'd be good in groups of adults too. I found it works with lots of people, but it really reminds me of that game that you could take out with your family time and time and time again. It would just be so enjoyable. Everyone sits around, everyone's laughs. It's a little, it's a little less intense or a little less rage inducing maybe than a game like Monopoly because you're not trying to bankrupt each other, but you're just you're just placing bets on camels, hoping the camels win or lose the race depending on your bets. Up next here is a game of Wingspan. Now I recently mentioned in a top 10 video that I don't like Wingspan maybe as much as the general population does. However, that being said, I still like the game and it fits this list so well. One of the reasons I really want to put Wingspan on this list is because it's a really good game for a certain group of people, people who maybe want to play a game want to have a good time with their friends and family, but can often kind of get frustrated or angry by the outcome of the game. Wingspan is a pretty individualistic game where you get birds, the birds have special effects on them and also victory points. You're going to build them on your own player board and there's not a lot other players can do to mess with your board. This is perfect for some groups of friends and family that really don't want a directly competitive in your face game. Maybe they just want to relax. Maybe at the end of the day, you and your family want to pull out a relaxing game where you just try to get some birds. You try to make them do cool combinations on your board. You kind of get to play out your strategy. At the end of the game, you see who has the most points and wins. Now, slightly more complicated than Wingspan is the fourth game on this list, and that is Viticulture. Now, all the nice things I just said about Wingspan being a little more calming and relaxing, maybe a good de-stressor at the end of the day, Think kind of the exact opposite for Viticulture. The more you play Viticulture, the more you'll realize that it's more in your face. It's more for groups that want some of that intensity. They want to get out and have more of a strategic competition of minds where they're going after each other. They're all trying to race to the end of the game first. You're going to block each other's in spots. You're trying to fill your orders first and race to 20 points. Now, I love the game of Viticulture. I don't think it's too mean, but it definitely kind of has that in your face, direct competition element to it. Just so you're aware, if that's not your group's thing, maybe check out Wingspan or check out the fifth game on the list, which is Everdell. 
For me, Everdell falls somewhere in the middle of the two games. It's not as hands-off as Wingspan, but it's not quite as mean and punishing as Viticulture can be. It also rivals Wingspan for being one of the best looking beautiful games out there. In Everdell, you're gonna be using workers, go to spots on the board and collecting resources to play cards. What really makes Everdell unique, the most unique thing about the game is that you kind of do one of two things on your turn. You can place a worker on the spot on the board or you can place a card, buy a card, pay for it basically, and put it into your little city, your area in front of you that can hold a total of 15 cards. This is really unique. It's not just that, which action do you want to go to about here? But you can do one of two things. It's not do both things, it's one of two. So it makes it for a really unique kind of timing thing. You might have five workers. You might for three turns in a row place a worker and then line yourself up where for the next three or four turns, you're just going to play a card. Now Everdell along with Viticulture are a step up in complexity from Wingspan, but none of the games on the list today are in that super high category of extremely complicated. And I kind of did that on purpose. I'm thinking more a staple game that you and your family can buy and take out again and again and again over maybe years of playing. And so maybe this list doesn't lend itself great to really, really complex games. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button down below as it helps the channel out. Also, if you want to subscribe, you'll see more videos like this. See ya.